All right. We are live for the first Mondays with Mark featuring Mike Rinder. Mondays with Mark and Mike. <laughs> That's right. Mondays <laughs> with Mark and Mike. Welcome, everybody. We're going to do 30 minutes of live Q&A on this channel, and then we're going to jump over. We're going to automatically redirect to part two on Mark Headley's channel called Blown for Good. Mark's gone from, uh, what, 100 subs to 6,000 subs in about eight days, <laughs> which is fantastic. Thanks gonna... to Aaron Subs. Thank you, Aaron <laughs> Subs. We're going to try to keep that momentum going. Um, so, guys, throw questions into the chat. And um, otherwise, let's see. What can we uh, chit-chat about before questions start popping up? Well, I got, I got something, Aaron. Yeah, go for Recently, it. Recently, there's been a whole bunch of of new guys that have showed up to sort of put harassing Twitter statements. Like I did a podcast today and at the beginning of the podcast, it was, he was streaming it live and there were two viewers. So one of these guys gets all excited and says, Oh, see what a failure you are. There was only two viewers, blah, 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 blah. This is a guy with 56 followers, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, an influencer. But, an influencer, As they call a them. social media influencer of big, mm -hmm. big time. In any event, I realized that these people that are doing this, that are doing the, the stand tweets and that sort of stuff, they're all perfect public for the Aftermath Foundation. So I started responding to each one of them saying, even you, when you finally wake up, the Aftermath Foundation will be there to help you. And it's actually a great, uh, like... We're always looking for ways, how do you get information about the Aftermath Foundation inside the walls of the bubble? Well, they're right there. They're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, wherever, and you can just keep mentioning and linking to the Aftermath Foundation site. And maybe one of those guys will wake up and reach out to us. Uh, like. One of the last comments I made to him, the guy with 52 followers, he said, you know, the Aftermath Foundation has helped more people than you have followers, <laughs> which is actually true. So, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> oh, you, someone likes my backdrop. How do you like that? Yep, I got my book. I got a bobblehead in there if I move my head. And on the other side, an Emmy. Yep. Nice. We're all set. All right, so let's see. This is a um, high-level question here. Why did you guys join a cult? <laughs> <laughs> I was born into it. Yes. Uh, me too. All three of us are born <laughs> into it. We have plausible deniability. It was not our fault. I never we were signed just, up for anything. I was just we there. <laughs> I just happened to be around when my mom joined up. We were just following orders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did somebody um, say free wins? Who? <laughs> Not me. No, Mark was trying to set something up and then I was waiting for it. No, somebody said in the comments something about the free wins. And every time I see a comment about the free wins, I got to. <laughs> Mark, we're not hearing anything. Did you play it? Yeah, you didn't hear it? No. Nothing. No, nothing. Really? It's like your joke felt completely flat as usual. What? <laughs> He's got an audio of a giant, like, ship's foghorn. <laughs> it's playing in my headphones. I hear it loud and clear. Oh, I, that's you're right. I, we well, have to wait. To, okay. Okay. We have to wait till again. I'm hosting. Say the words free wins, and I'll do it for you, Mark. Okay. Free wins. Oh. <laughs> it's not the same as that, but it started out exactly the same as what it is. Yeah. It had to go down, it had to drop down an octave. Yeah, it just goes, oh, oh but yeah. um, okay. I've got some really good ones, but I guess we'll have to wait till my stream to hear those. All right. So, Mike, <laughs> is there any info on whether the hole still exists? No. <laughs> I suspect not. I, I yeah. really do. I mean, you, you have seen historically the changes that have happened in Scientology that have been brought about by outside pressure. You know, they no longer demand Sea Org members get, get abortions. And that had nothing to do with any internal decision. It was only because of the exposure 
in the media and on the internet and whatever of the horrific practice of basically forcing women to get abortions who got pregnant in the Sea Org. And we've seen a bunch of other things change. Like we, we have all now come across people who have been allowed to see their dying relatives even though they are declared SPs. A bit, that's a massive change. And I suspect that the whole was disbanded when they got wind of the FBI investigation, which was primarily about the whole in 2009 and 2010. It doesn't mean, it, it's like we canceled fair game. It's the same thing. You know, we got rid of the whole, but that doesn't mean that we're treating anybody any better. We just There's don't just no call physical it thing called the whole. Exactly. <laughs> the so, thing that was the whole is no longer, but they're just doing that somewhere else. Yep. We did hear of a person who left that also said that they were letting people go on leave. Like uh, if somebody had a wedding or uh, a funeral they'd send the person but they'd send them with their spouse or a minder a handler yeah a handler but they have been letting people go we just hear like yeah my daughter showed up and there's just this weird girl that was with her that nobody <laughs> knew and she never talked to anybody but she was with my daughter the entire wedding it was like right. what yeah and there's also um multiple reports that they have stopped assigning people to the RPF um, and they graduated everybody off of the RPF that was on it. So um, as best we know, there is currently no RPF. Now, this has happened other times in the history of Scientology, um, but it's still a change. And, and this change is weird because it wasn't officially – there was nothing issued in writing saying we're officially canceling the RPF. They were just like, oh, yeah, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can't you can't officially cancel it because it's a flag order or flag orders. And even though they were written by Ken Urquhart, that was own Ken Urquhart wrote those flag orders. Hubbard laid out exactly what he was to say, and he had his name on them because that's the sort of thing that Ron didn't really want to be totally associated with. You know, the the kind of. Uh, it, it was bad PR. So, but nevertheless, it, it's not the sort of thing that one can just easily cancel. Although, you know, the world of Scientology is a changed world these days where David Miscavige is able to cancel the briefing course of all things, you know. And key to life and, and life orientation life. course. And all these things that whoever <laughs> said so much. And like the briefing course in particular is like, that was the thing that Hubbard said. This is where real orders are trained. And, you know, it's 325 or 235 or however many lectures by L. Ron Hubbard training auditors. And those are no longer good because, what, he's, his punctuation was no good? I, I didn't even get what the logic of being able to cancel the briefing course is. Can't use the same excuse as the books where the chapters got out of sequence or, you know, it was there were too many colons or anything like that. So I, also, you know, since Dave out of everyone, Dave's the one who talked it up the most. We did all those <laughs> lectures and we did all of all the binders and the glossaries right. and the transcripts. And it was always his baby. And yep. then until it wasn't right because yeah, those, it probably because it was such a abysmal failure. We, we never even we made. I think we made 500 sets of those cassettes. Of the and I know we're getting cassette. like a, a bit into the weeds on this, but even in the first golden age of tech in 1996, the briefing course was canceled for how, however many years it took for. Uh, enough people to be ready to do it. But it seems a little different this time. It seems like it's indefinitely canceled until he can redo the entire briefing course. Yes, exactly. Which and, is and forever because they're which never going to never do happen. That. Yeah. Like he's been it's, saying, Aaron, I don't know if you know this. Miscavige has said that the L's, the famous flag L rundowns, are totally squirrel for 30 years. I'm not kidding. 30 years. It would come up in a the, meeting every week. He'd be like, and no one's working on the L's. And, you know, that would, it, would, it, was, it was like a throwaway. It would be added to the, the long <laughs> list of everything that never gets done. And it was always like, 
wait a minute, the L's are squirrel, but you guys are like, they're the thing that makes the most money at flag every single week. Like they sell millions, uh, millions of dollars worth of L's every month, but they're totally squirrel and they've never, and they were never ever on source. That's yeah. a really funny distinction because the reason he doesn't care about putting the briefing course on hold is because public were using the fact that they were in the middle of the briefing course as an, as an excuse not to do Miscavige's new auditor courses. Right. So he was like, F you guys, briefing course is canceled, but the L's make so much freaking money, he would never suspend those. Right. Oh, but also all of his things, they can be done anywhere on the bridge. Anything that he releases <laughs> is you can do that wherever you want. Oh, you want to do the cause resurgence rundown? Doesn't matter where you are, you can do it at any time. And you could also do it like 20 times if you wanted to. Yep. <laughs> yep. Someone someone just put up a question saying, do you think that the fear uh -oh. of the of the FBI raiding the gold base was basically what resulted in the gold base being shut down? I, I mean, it isn't entirely shut down, but it certainly was you know, faded into the background and it is absolutely the reason. And yeah, there that is place a second, is there basically is a, mothballed the right. whole place. <laughs> but there is a secondary reason, which is a part of the human trafficking statutes and, and the law revolves around whether you are working at a job, particularly manufacturing and living in the same facility. And this was a big, that's why they shifted the e-meter and tapes out of gold. They went to bridge because you don't live at bridge. And that is an, one of the indicia of human trafficking is that you have people living in the same place as you're making them slave labor work. So For something that you sell. Right. Not so, a volunteer. When you're making movies, you can get away with that. But if you're making widgets and you're selling widgets, then that kind of crosses over into this is very, very not, uh, you know, kosher. Yeah. Yeah. So, very so interesting. That was a good question. It was All also right, somebody so, had a question about the eagle's nest. Well, hold on, hold on. We're going to take them in sequence here and we'll do them quick too. Cause then we're going to jump over to Mark's for the continuation. Um, okay. So who has the most compelling Sea Org escape story? Well, it's not a competition now, but now Valerie, Mm, or or free winds guy don jason don oh, jason down the don, jason, down. Is, don yeah, jason and valerie too uh, they're, they're probably the two best yeah what did he didn't he slide down the uh the the mooring rope yeah with a, with a makeshift like roller it was incredible yeah i wish and, don would i wish don would speak out what's the deal there i don't know mm, yeah <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all right Valerie, right. Valerie hid in the trunk of a car for an hour and a half from the gold base to L to to L.A. That's yeah. that's gangster. Yeah, yeah. That that's was super cool. gangster. And the guy didn't know. That's the best part. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I did a video the other day about what I called a sniper's nest at the int base. Someone else called it the Eagles lookout or something like that. <laughs> and um, so what is it really used for? It was called Eagle. It's a security watch place for the property. They can see every way into the property and the entire property from one place. They can pretty much see everything. They did have they did have rifles up there occasionally. And there is a story in the book about a security guard that was following Dave around in the <clears throat> in the scope. He, yeah. I don't think it was loaded. I don't think he planned to shoot him. He was just following Dave. But the fact that he confessed to that after lighting the entire mountain on fire, um, which is a story in the book, uh, because he took a dump up there and he didn't <laughs> want anybody to know. He didn't want anybody to know that he did it. So he's tried to burn the toilet paper and instead he burned like 200 acres worth of mountains down. But um, yeah, that happened. And that okay, happened so at Eagle. So why is it camouflaged if it's a security lookout? What's the point of hiding it? Um, it's not really camouflaged. It's just sort of dug into the side. It's like a little seat in a hole with, you know, bushes and scrub around it. I, I think that uh, they were concerned that if it was too obvious that, you know, John Sweeney or someone would fly over and 
turn it into a news story. And yeah, like Aaron did. Any news story <laughs> about that base is bad. It doesn't matter what it is or who it is or how big the – it's a flap. So, yeah. you know, I, I we could probably ask Jackson why did it get camouflaged. He probably got told by someone in RTC, you better make sure this thing is not conspicuous and that nobody ever comes – sort of, you, if you're flying over it, you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did get some messages from some former Int guys being like, well, it wasn't actually a sniper's nest. And I'm like, well, a deer blind is a deer blind, even if you're not using it for hunting. If it's, ele <laughs> if it's elevated and it's camouflaged and you got a rifle, it's a sniper's nest. <laughs> All right, next question. Mike, how did you become friends with Leah? And uh, yeah. How did I become friends with Leah? Okay. Um, well, I met Leah, as I describe in the book, because she was introduced to me by Lisa Marie Presley, who I knew fairly well and had dealt with a lot. I didn't really have any interaction with Leah, but I met her at the grand opening of the CCHR, psych, uh, whatever, Industry Citizens of Death, yeah. the Industry of Death exhibit on, on uh, Sunset, and sort of hit it off with her right away because... Lisa Marie said, let's go outside and have a cigarette. And so we went outside onto the balcony and Leah was already there. And she said, oh, do you know Leah? No, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fast forward. I didn't really have a lot to do with Leah over the rest of my career in the Sea Org. When she started getting a lot of shit about uh, asking about where was Shelly, she called me up. She actually first called Debbie Cook whom she knew, obviously, from the FSO, asked Debbie Cook for my phone number and then called me up out of the blue and said, hi, this is Leah. I just want to talk to you because I want to hear your side of what I'm being told about you. I'm being told blah, 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 and this is what happened to me, and this is what the handlers are saying, and blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, well, I'll tell you, you know, I... I, I don't ever try and pretend to someone that I'm going to tell them some different thing because of who they are or what I think they might want to hear. I just told her what I, th what I thought. She told me that she was trying to get the money back now for the truth rundown that she had undergone at Flag, $300,000. And I said, well, good luck with that. And she was like, what do you mean good luck with that? I said, they never give money back, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, guys, you know that while this was going on, she was being handled. She was being handled by uh, Woodruff from CC and uh, Hans Schurli Stali was sent in and eventually Miscavige himself. And she went to have meetings with Ms. Kevin. She said, well, what's going to happen? I said, well, here's, what ha here's how the meeting's going to go down, Leah. He's going to walk in. He's going to say, oh, it's terrible, all the things that have happened to you. When I found out about this, shit really hit the fan. Everybody involved as being shit canned. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. And you're going to hear how he knew nothing. She said, well, that's bullshit. I know it's bullshit. I said, of course, so do I. A person like you is not, and when the flap occurred at Tom Cruise's wedding when he was there and it's about his wife, he knows every detail about what has happened in your handling. She said, okay, we'll see what happens. She, comes, she, she gets out of the meeting with Miscavige and calls me. And she, she was still in good standing. She was still a Scientologist. She said, okay, you were 100% right. He almost exactly said the words that you said. I said, yeah, well, you know, I know how these things go. And from that point, we just got, she would then call me and ask me, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And it just sort of built. And then subsequent. I didn't really have anything to, I went and visited her in LA and she said, you know, you need to get out of this Scientology shit. This is bad for you. It's not good karma. You know, just leave it all behind. And I said, Lee, I can't, I need, you know, I feel a responsibility. Well, then she started writing a book and then she wanted me to help her with a book. And then she came up with the aftermath and then she called me about the aftermath and so on and so on. So 
That's the story of Mikey and Lily. And the rest is history. The rest is history. That is the result. Yep. Okay, so here's one. If you could go back in time, would you rather have not been a Scientologist and been a different people today or been a Scientologist and be what you are today? The latter. Because I wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't have met my wife and I wouldn't have my boys and I wouldn't do it any. I would do it all exactly the same. It was all I, meant I, to be. I have the same answer. I, 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 do, I, I resist any temptation to look back on my life with regret, but instead try and look back and go, this prepared me for this next step. That prepared me for the step after that. That prepared me for that. And I'm here doing what I'm supposed to be doing and have been very well prepared to do it. Yep. That makes sense. I agree with all that. How do I get on a mailing list to receive the envelopes from Scientology? Or can I just send the aftermath cards to any org in a greeting card? You can just send them to the orgs. Yeah. You can yeah, look up the addresses. They're on Scientology.org. But she's yeah, asking how to get on the mailing list. So don't get on their mailing you. list because you will, they will burn a for, they will chop a force down sending you stuff. You will get, <laughs> and also they, they use like a skip trace program. If you ever move or do anything else, you'll get, you will get mail. They, what did that one girl say? They're worse than bed, bath and beyond. You will get <laughs> mail from oh, them funny. <laughs> for eternity. <laughs> that was funny. Wasn't it? All right. That's, so a, that's an inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is a person met me and mark at howdy con in denver mark said he was responsible for leaking tom and nicole's breakup to the tabloids no but i was I still in when tom and nicole broke up it was uh and it and it i never did i never leaked um i didn't it, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day that's going to be in a whole video series that i'm doing but it's basically um, just Tom and Katie stuff that I knew about, and and it was while it was while they were together, not when they broke up. There you go. So when people leave Scientology, do they fear for their lives? Do they think something bad might happen to them? And might it? What do you guys think? Um, I think people do fear for their lives, but not fear for their lives because of you know there's PIs that are going to come and and run them off the road. I think people fear for their lives because of what they've been told when they were in Scientology. That if you leave, you're going to get cancer, you're going to die a terrible death, that the world out there is this horrible place, blah, 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 blah. There is some um, unfounded fear, I guess, that people have that, you know, the dirty tricks department, OSA, may engage in some physical harm. But my experience is that that, is not the case, that physical harm is not the sort of playbook of the how to silence critics. It is mental, mental games. And that, that it's sort of, if physical harm was actually the, the modus operandi of these people, then Leah and I would have suffered physical harm. And, you know, we haven't. So, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. OK, so what if someone went into auditing and said in a previous life that they were L. Ron Hubbard? How would Miscavige react? Laugh. Yeah, that's happened before. It it's actually happens a, a lot. I yeah. mean, Sea Org members even say they were L. Ron Hubbard and usually they're put on the quick train out of the Sea Org. <laughs> you know, we had a gal. um, I won't say her name, but we did have a gal at the end base who thought she was um, Abraham Lincoln. And that was the reason why she was getting all these weird headaches. Oh um, but that's a real, that's a true, that's a true story. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay. Mike's got a book. Mark's got a book. What's the hold up? A, a run. I do not have <laughs> the attention span and the discipline to write a book, but I've said the best idea that I have for a book is figuring out what to do with like the thousand reports and dispatches and cramming orders that I have from my time in the Sea Org. It paints like this amazing chronological look into the life of a Sea Org member. And maybe one day I'll figure out what to do with that. It's but called until... the Sea Org Files. Aaron Smith Levin, <laughs> the Sea Org, Org Files. Files. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> live tweet them for two weeks yeah. straight. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> there you go. Just give me a little New York slice of that action, Aaron. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so who is Goldie? Is that she's Clea? The, no, 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 no. She's the admin. Oh. She's an admin. Oh, okay. Um, so she Aaron's got moderate, Aaron's moderate, got people. I mean, he's got a. He's got like. He's got he, people. Yeah. <laughs> We're not allowed to have people for the Aftermath Foundation. How does now, that have them? <laughs> now he's got he's got people. Are there any celebs that Scientology really wanted but failed to recruit? Are there any that wanted to join but got rejected? Well, nobody gets rejected, right? No. No no, no rejections. They certainly wanted Steven Spielberg and Ron yeah. Howard. Oh, those were two big ones. I talk about them in my book. You know, uh, Ron Howard was brought to the Int base and wined and dined by Miscavige and Tom Cruise. And I went and met with Brian Grazer at Imagine, which is his producing partner, to try and schmooze him. And, of course, the, the effort on, on uh, Steven Spielberg met a, <laughs> a fairly rapid demise when CCHR went and protested outside of his children's psychiatrist's office and his wife had a shit fit. So, but th those two, and I think a whole bunch of other people that Tom Cruise has done movies with, where there was, you know, remember on War of the Worlds, they had a VM tent down there at the Paramount lot. And well, even that, Will and Jada are sort of failed recruits. They were, they had yeah. them and then they lost them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah true. Okay, so I feel bad because we've got a few minutes left and we're not going to be able to get to all the Super Chats, so let's just do like a speed round here. Do you guys remember David Mayo? Yes, yes. we all remember David Mayo. Can't, not enough time to talk about him, but uh, maybe that's a good subject for a future one. What physical altercation happened around the Dallas Ideal or Grand Opening? The last thing I ever did in Scientology was attend that event. I left staff just prior to this. Angie Blankenship was a nightmare. Do you guys know anything about a, an altercation at the Dallas Ideal? I, I have some vague recollection of this, but I don't, I, I, you know, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we don't have the details. Is Pat Broker watching this? <laughs> I doubt it. S speak Pat. up. Speak up if you are, Pat. But leave a <laughs> note. Leave a note in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> What qualities are needed to get to Mike's level in the Sea Org? In other words, what did Mike have that all the others didn't? Oh, good one. Longevity. <laughs> Longevity. Mike was there no matter what. He stuck it out. <clears throat> it's the sticker outers that uh, that the cream rise to the rises to the top. Well, I think also I, I think also it is uh, an ability to not be affected by things that other people are affected by. I mean, you know, Mark, I was notorious as the guy that nothing, every, you know. Like water off a duck's back. <laughs> Dave could literally be screaming and yelling at him, and Mike would just be so straight-faced, like, whenever you're done, it was just like, he could not, he could not break him and but that's how he was when he was on the on the news or in an interview. You couldn't break him, so he was unbreakable. Makes sense. Until the unbreakable Mister Lovely. <laughs> do you guys still get followed out in public? And if so, how do you manage it? I've never noticed myself being followed, even though the website makes it clear it was happening. You guys ever noticed yourself getting followed still? No, not recently. Only the last time I think I was was when I was with Mike in um sundance when we went to sundance and we were i mean we had a a big harley well, Davidson. well no the, the last time was when we shot the episode of the aftermath well yeah but i wasn't with you when that happened yeah but those guys but when we were at your at your shop oh that's true that's true anyway that that yeah. was yeah. probably the last time yeah okay. that's true Okay, good. We got like a minute left here. When people reach OT3, do they have to read Hubbard's chicken scratch notes where he calls the premise of his own Xenu story very space opera? They do read the handwritten scratch. Yes. Because that's yep. the only form that that material is in, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. And also okay. space opera is just a descriptive. I'm going over to my channel. Okay, cool. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hey, you're going to be redirected to uh, Mark Headley's part two of this chat. We'll see you over there. Bye-bye.